Hello friends, this video on molecular basis of inheritance part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now the question is who is going to provide energy for this entire replication process because when we say that this enzyme is going to create a new strand altogether, so creating a new strand is like a polymerization reaction that is joining the nucleotides to form a polynucleotide. Now how do we join the nucleotides? We saw right it is with the help of the various types of bonds for example the so the phosphodiester bonds will join the various nucleotides to form the polynucleotide. Now for this bond formation also you will now for this entire process to take place some energy will be required. So who is going to provide that energy? So there has to be somebody who will provide all the energy that is needed for the replication process because these enzymes which we talked about they can only uh, help in the reactions taking place but they are not going to provide any energy like let us suppose if you go to the market you want to buy stuffs you want to buy a chocolate you want to buy a pen you want to buy books so you need to pay for all of them but you do not earn so you do not have money so you are just a student you are still studying so you do not have money but there is somebody who spends for you for example you are going out with your mother so your mother will be paying for whatever you want to buy so she is the one who provides the energy for the uh, purchasing process you can think it like that so in a very similar way for this replication process deoxyribonucleoside triphosphates they act as substrate, substrates and provide energy for the polymerization reaction now what is this deoxyribonucleoside you remember nucleoside we spoke about them what is a nucleoside when the sugar when the pentose sugar and the nitrogenous base they combine with each other they, they form a nucleoside now when the pentose sugar is a deoxyribo sugar and when deoxyribo sugar combines with a base it forms deoxyribo nucleoside when this deoxyribo nucleoside combines with a triple phosphate triphosphate like how we have it in ATP adenosine triphosphate it becomes a very high energy molecule because high energy is stored in the phosphate bonds. So this is how the structure of deoxyadenosine triphosphate is. So it is not only adenosine, the basis can be anything, it can be added. So here you see this is the sugar. So this is deoxyribose sugar. So this is deoxyribose sugar. This portion is the base and the base in this case is adenine and this portion is the triphosphate so this triphosphate stores a lot of energy in its bonds and this energy gets released during hydrolysis and that is the energy which provides uh, which is being provided during the polymerization reaction. So there are more examples of deoxyribonucleoside triphosphates depending upon the nitrogenous base which gets attached to it. It is not necessary that it has to be adenine. It can be guanine as well. So in that case it becomes deoxyguanosine triphosphate. So here you see the entire structure is the same. It is just that the base is now not adenine. Instead it is guanine. So the base is guanine here or it can be deoxycytosine triphosphate and similarly it can be thiamine triphosphate as well. So depending upon which is the base, the structures will change. But these molecules act as high energy molecules storing a lot of energy in their triphosphate bonds and they provide the energy for this entire DNA replication process. So now we are uh, all aware of all the machinery and the enzymes. So for this process, of course, we need the DNA. Other than DNA, we need quite a few enzymes and we also need these deoxyribonucleoside triphosphates to provide the energy. So let us now try to understand the exact process of replication. So how DNA polymerase works. So now we will understand the working of DNA polymerase and also the process of DNA replication step by step. Now first of all we have to understand this that it is not that the process of replication can start anywhere in DNA. That doesn't happen. The specific region in a DNA where the process of replication initiates is known as the origin of replication. 
or replication origin. Now where exactly it happens? It is the point from where the DNA strands start separating out from each other. I told you right, in semi-conservative mode of DNA replication, the two strands of DNA has to separate out and then copies are created based on each of those strands which act as template strands. So that is the basic concept. So here the region from where it starts getting divided into two strands that is that point is known as the origin of replication and it doesn't happen just anywhere in DNA at some certain specific points and they are termed as origin. Now who helps in separating the two strands? Yes, the enzyme helicase and how does it help in this process? By breaking the hydrogen bonds between the bases like the nitrogenous bases for example uh, adenine and thionine they are connected to each other by a double by a, by two hydrogen bonds similarly cytosine and um, guanine they are connected to each other by three hydrogen bonds so all those hydrogen bonds are being broken by the enzyme helicase and when the hydrogen bonds are broken what happens the two strands will separate out and when the two strands separate out a structure is formed and the, due to the shape of the structure, it is known as a replication fork structure. So the, uh, it is said that a replication fork is formed. So once this structure is formed, only then the, the action of DNA polymerase starts. So a structure like this, this is known as the replication fork. So this was the original DNA. The, the parental DNA I mean now you see from here it started it, it got divided into two halves why because the enzyme would have come here and the enzyme would have actually started breaking the bonds in this direction now as the enzymes keep moving in this direction the bonds continuously keep on breaking and as the bonds break the two strands separate out from each other so Please do not get into too much of detail of this picture. I will explain you with an animation for better understanding. So here you just notice a few small things. If you look at the two strands of DNA, they are anti-parallel to each other. This is the five prime end. This is the three prime end. For the other strand, this is the three prime end and this is the five prime end. So they are anti-parallel to each other. So when the enzyme comes in, it divides it into this replication fork structure. So let us see how the enzyme does this. Let us suppose this was your parental DNA where you have two, the two strands, red and blue. So one of them is five prime to three prime. The other one is from three prime to five prime. And this sphere, which you see here, this is to represent the enzyme helicase. Now what happens when the enzyme helicase comes in contact? Now as the enzyme helicase moves through this uh, DNA it continuously keeps on breaking this hydrogen bonds the bonds the green colored structure which you see they represent the hydrogen bond joining the nitrogenous bases so these bonds are being broken and as a result the red and the blue strands get separated so you see this is the red strand and this is the blue strand and this process keeps on taking place so as, as the enzyme goes this side it widens up so the the two strands separate out so these two strands one of them is known as the leading strand the other one is known as the lagging strand so and they will also be obviously anti-parallel to each other because if this was your let us say five dash end so this is going to be your three dash end let us suppose the red strand had five dash end this side let us suppose this was five prime end so this end will be the three prime end similarly for the blue one this is going to be the five prime end so this is how helicase works so this is the first step for the process of dna replication so thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.